everyone, this is Pika Entertainment and we are back again and we're now going to talk boxing and just do another quick preview of the rescheduled heavyweight clash between Alexander Uzik and Jarek Chisora. This was originally meant to take place way back now in May 23rd but due to the obvious Covid outbreak and how that's really affected boxing and brought it to a standstill for the last couple of months, they've now rescheduled it to take place on Saturday the 31st of October. So as we all know this will be Alexander Uzik's second heavyweight bout after his first heavyweight debut against Charles Witherspoon. Now whilst Uzik did get a convincing win it wasn't really a win that announced him on the heavyweight stage. It didn't do anything to convince me that he's going to go on and conquer the heavyweight division or become a major player. So everybody is really looking at this fight because this will really be the first test at heavyweight now okay Chisora has had lots of losses on his record he's still I would say a resolute and tough opponent and he is the ideal test really for someone who's moved up from cruiserweight and I think he will provide a good challenge for is it I said in my original preview way back now if I can remember I believe that Uzik will get a late stoppage, maybe in the 10th or 11th round. I think Chisora will start off well. He'll come forward as he typically does. He's going to look to pressure Uzik. He's going to be throwing lots of right hooks and body punches. Really look to take the fight to Uzik. And the real interest is going to be how does Uzik cope with that? You know, majority of his fights, he's really been the pace setter. He's the one who really is able to plant his feet and dictate the tempo and fight at his own pace but now that we're coming at a different division now will Uzik still be able to control his opponent and control his positioning throughout the ring it's really going to be interesting to see how he'll cope with a much heavier man leaning on him looking to barge towards him and throwing lots of left hooks and everywhere you know I anticipate still the first early couple of rounds Uzik will have to adjust to the size of Chisora and I wouldn't be surprised if Chisora wins the first couple of rounds just on his pure aggression. I'm not saying by any means that Chisora is going to score a couple of early knockouts, no, but because of his aggressive style, we all know that that's what really a lot of judges, they look to see. They look to see more proactive fighters who are very aggressive, come forward and look to take the fight to their opponent. So it wouldn't surprise me if Chisora wins a couple of early rounds while Uzik really looks to get his bearings and his positions and really work Chisora out before asserting himself in the middle to late rounds and I just think that if it's one thing that's always worked against Chisora it's always been his endurance and his stamina because you know he's quite a big unit and when you start off at such a aggressive pace as what he normally does for his fights that eventually is going to catch up with you in the later rounds and I think that's what's cost him a lot in his last couple of losses particularly I think against Dylan White even though I mentioned in my first preview I definitely thought he won the first fight against Dylan White which Dylan White won on points and I still had Chisora winning the second fight against Dylan White prior to him getting knocked out and even when he incurred a point penalty I still think Chisora was getting the upper hand so as I mentioned before I do think this is a suitable enough test not to say Uzik is ready to conquer the division but just to see whether he is good enough to handle the heavyweights and get a good enough run within the division now we all know I think deep down well prior to this Covid outbreak I think the original plan was to have a unification bout with Andy Joshua who we all know regains his three belts against Andy Ruiz Uzik was his mandatory for the WBO belt, something I've never agreed with. I know that is a standard rule of the WBO that if you have a fighter who unifies the lower division and comes up, they automatically get a mandatory shot. I know that's the ruling, but I've never agreed with that. But Uzik was Anthony Joshua's WBO mandatory. And because they're both committed to the zone matchroom stable, they wanted obviously to keep that unification bout within their own house so I think what probably would have happened was Joshua may have dropped the WBO belt have Uzik win the belt have a couple of fights 
as WBO champion, really look to build up Usyk's stature as a heavyweight contender, and then you can make that unification fight against Anthony Joshua, and then it carries a much more bigger weight, right? I think that was the original plan, but obviously due to COVID, everything has kind of really been messed up for boxing. And we all know now that really the biggest fight within the sport is the AJ and Fury. And really that's kind of been moved along a couple of paces now due to this COVID and the supposed announcement or the recent news that the third fight between Wilder and Fury is now not happening. Well, it hasn't officially been stated. It seems now that that fight will not be happening now this year. I wouldn't surprise me if it resurfaces later on next year because it's still a massive payday but of course what is deterring everybody from putting on these massive fights is the fact that you have no crowds and boxing even more so than football is so reliant on the gate revenue on the crowds turning up they rely on that as much as they do the pay-per-view revenues it's very difficult for them to make any concerned profit from these fights so that's why you're seeing a lot of these fights getting pushed back it's the same with all sports and all industry alike so it's no real surprise there so just to mention it back to this fight i see a late stoppage for Usyk, maybe the 10th or 11th round i just think chisora will come out fast lots of pressure lots of right hooks lots of throwing punches I still think this fight that Uzek is a cruiserweight, he's got enough about him, he's experienced enough to withstand the assault and then he'll come on strong in the later round. So I think it will be a decent fight, I'm not expecting a massive war, I'm not anything really expecting a massive spectacle within the fight, I think it will be a decent showing but just nothing really special out there and I know another contentious point as ever with boxing is the pay-per-view and me personally I still can't believe that this is priced at £20, you know, I as, as you know previous videos I've done on this channel with boxing, I hate the idea of pay-per-view, I don't think it benefits the sport in any way possible. I understand now in the COVID climate, as I mentioned before, they're going to be more emphasising on the pay-per-view because they don't have the gate revenue. But still, I think it still has to warrant the occasion. And you have to remember, there's no belt on the line here, right? This isn't going to decide who is the top heavyweight within the division. This has no bearing whatsoever on AJ and Fury or Fury and Wilder, which really, if we think about it, they are the three biggest names within the division, right? This has no bearing at all on what happens within that development. So it really is, like I said, just a litmus test for Uzik. That's all it is because Chisora is a journeyman and we all know he's in it really just now for the paydays, you know, while he can still get them, that's fair enough. But Usyk is the kind of next superstar that they want to try and build up. He has a lot of credibility because he was undisputed that Cruiserweight, that's a division that really is not unknown to the, it's not really known as well to the casual fans, but it's a division that is very respected by the hardcore fans, right? So he carries a lot of credibility, so they're going to try and carry that forward into the heavyweight division so that's what this really is so i just don't believe it's a pay-per-view fight and i definitely don't think it's a pay-per-view fight that should be charged at 20 pounds i just think that's just scandalous in my eyes i mean we could do multiple videos about the pay-per-view and how it should be happening i mean and i just don't think this fight warrants it i mean if we look at the undercard quickly we have of course Lee Selby against George Cambosos. I think that was an original fight on the original cards scheduled back for May. We also have Tommy McCarthy against Wilder Lagoon. Again, I hold my hands up. I don't really know too much about those fighters. We've got Savannah Marshall against Hannah Rankin. Amy Timlin against Carly Skelly. We've got David Allen against Christopher Lovejoy. And um, I've looked at various videos and apparently this Christopher Lovejoy is very much overweight. And again, Dave Allen is another controversial figure because many fans question how does he keep getting put on these pay-per-view shows despite the fact that he's lost multiple times and he doesn't seem to always prepare himself right for these fights why does he keep getting these opportunities so again it's just very much i think of a low standard undercard and the fact that it's 20 pounds i mean well this is the nature of the sport you know unfortunately and 
you know if we ever get back to some normalcy i think if possible this whole experience of covid will hopefully teach the promoters that they've really got to make these big fights sooner and start justifying more of these pay-per-view prices that they're putting on for these events but that's a whole other debate for another day but just to stick primarily back to Usyk and Chisora, if you want to give me a prediction as I said I think a late round stoppage for Usyk 10th or 11th round it will be a decent scrap but nothing special I wouldn't be completely shocked if Chisora scores a knockout I wouldn't be completely shocked because like I said he is the more experienced heavyweight and he is by no means a pushover you know and is Usyk really going to have the power to take out Chisora in the early rounds I don't think he is he's a very steady worker Usyk he doesn't come up there looking to bang and crack straight away he really looks to set his position and find his own range first before really asserting himself if you look by the Chaz Witherspoon fight that wasn't nothing special and really the onus was on him to really make an impression and he didn't really do so until the later on round so don't expect a thriller minute epic don't expect a high octane spectacular clash just expect i think uzik to use his more athleticism and his greater weight to see him through in the later rounds and score an 11th round stoppage over Derek Chisora. So those are my thoughts again on a second preview for this fight. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think about the outcome of this fight? Who do you think is going to have the upper hand? Do you think it's a lot closer than what the bookies and many fans and pundits have it? Or do you think Derek Tajora actually has a chance? Would you make him a favourite? Because he's going to be obviously the more powerful hitter and the bigger man in the ring. And do you think it will have a telling factor? Do you think the fact that we'll have no crowds and the fact that it's at Wembley, again, very strange choice to have it at Wembley when you've got no crowds there again. I don't know the reasoning behind that, but fair enough. But do you think the fact that no crowds will actually help Chisora as such in this fight or you don't think it will have any effect and Usyk will just be able to measure himself and go through and complete a winning performance? So those are my thoughts for now on the rescheduled bout between Alexander Usyk and Derek Chisora. Let me know what you think of the comments below. Take care of yourselves, stay at safe distances, and I will see you very, very soon.